Hello, welcome back. We are nearing the end of this week's lectures. Woo! Um, only one more video after this, I think. We are going to talk about truth tables a little bit more, but we're going to use the truth table. So, in the first example that we're going to do, um, when we go into it, we may not be trying to use it for anything, but we're going to see that the conclusion that we can draw from the truth table is kind of interesting. Then, we are going to talk about tautologies, contradictions, and then talk more about proving logical equivalence using truth tables and a little bit of information about the implication. Let's get started with our first truth table that we're going to talk about. And remember, you've got to keep in mind order of precedence. Remember, we want to think about parentheses grouping that operation, so we're going to have to uh, evaluate that first and negation comes before and an or and an or comes before those implications so if I think about this compound proposition if I'm trying to construct a truth table of it I have to think about the order of operations order of precedence of these logical operators so what I'm gonna think about is how what order would my columns come in so it doesn't really matter if I start on the left or on the right as long as I group everything um, as shown. I know that there's an implied parenthesis here because I know that or comes before the implication. So I have to evaluate this compound proposition before I add in if and only if. What I'm saying is it wouldn't be accurate to take this guy, amend it, and add this if and only if not p. We have to do the or first and then add into the implication. So, so what I'm going to do is break this down into the columns that I'm going to do. The first thing I see is these parentheses here. So I'm going to start by evaluating this P and Q. Then I'm going to add in this in, uh, negation. So then I'll have the second column is going to be the negation of P and Q. So let me write this down as I'm doing it. So the first column that I'm going to evaluate the truth values P and Q and then I'm going to have another column here, maybe, my squigglies, negation of P and Q. And then I'm going to look on the right hand side of that if and only if. I know that negation comes before or in the order of precedence, so I know I need to evaluate negation of P and negation of Q first. So what I'm going to do is make two more columns for those negations and it seems kind of silly because these are kind of simple operations with the negation but I promise you it will kind of be helpful to keep track of all those little things and have them there um, and then since we've got those negations evaluated we can go ahead and evaluate this or I know that I have to evaluate the or before the if and only if so I know the or is going to be next then so my next column is going to be negation of P or negation of Q. And then finally, if you notice, I've got this whole thing here, and I've got this whole thing here, so the last operator that I would evaluate would be this if and only if. So my final column should always be the compound proposition that I'm trying to build a truth table of. So finally, we can put together this column and this column to get our final compound proposition. And you're going to want to be really careful and make sure um, that you're paying attention to only these two columns when you put them together because uh, there's a lot of things going on and you can get easily distracted. So <clears throat> if you notice, the setup was already done for us. This may or may not happen on your assessment, so make sure that you understand that if I look at this compound proposition, I notice two atomic propositions or simple sentences or whatever um, you want to think of them as. And so my, I start by listing those two atomic propositions and then I list the truth value combinations. And since I've got two atomic propositions, I've got four truth value combinations. So now I've set up my steps and I'm just going to go ahead and evaluate the truth values of each of my steps, basing those truth values on the truth values of P and Q, these combinations, these four possible combinations. Okay? And I promise you, we're going to get a cool result. Okay? Well, <laughs> I think. All right. 
So first, let's figure out the truth values of P and Q. So to figure this out, I'm going to look at each row, each truth value combination. So if P is true and Q is true, <coughs> true is true is false. Or true and true is true. True and false is false. False and true is false. False and false is false. All right. Now, let's think about what's changing from here to here. Because remember, we just amended this previous compound proposition. We added in this negation. So then, remember, you got a lot of columns, a lot of rows going on. Make sure you focus in on only what you need to focus in on. So I'm just going to focus in on this column here, the P and Q. And then the only way that it changes is I negate it. So instead of true, I'm going to have false. Instead of false, I'm going to have true. And there we go. We've got our left-hand side. We've got our left here. Let's keep track of what we're doing here. I got a lot of notes. It's kind of messy. Uh, so now we've got that negation of P and Q. So if you want to do a little bit of extra exploration here, go through and think about what is, so this is like a side note. Sorry, guys. Note. Think about what's negation of P and Q. Notice that you're going to get two different things here. Okay? So notice that these are not logically equivalent because here, this negation is applying to both of these pieces. Here, it's just applying to that P. So these parentheses are really important and it's important to think about this negation. And actually, what we're hinting out here and what I'm excited to share with you, we're kind of getting to De Morgan's laws for and and or. Okay, so we're, so we're getting kind of hinting at that. And, and you'll see that more in your homework and understand what I'm saying about De Morgan's Law. Or you Google it and find out a little bit of information. So, so we've got this left-hand side. Now we're focusing in on this right-hand side because I know that I'm going to evaluate this if and only if last because it's the final thing in my order of precedence. So I'm going to go to my next column. Think about negation of P. So I'm going to focus in on my P column only, try not to get distracted by everything else, line up my finger, cover everything up with this other piece of paper or ruler, however you want to do it. So negation of true is false, negation of true is false, negation of false is true, negation of false is true. So true, true, false, false, if we negate it, it should be false, false, true, true. Same story with Q, not Q, right? We're evaluating these two things because negation comes before or. So we're going to evaluate these two things, find the truth values, combine them with or. So same story, negation of Q, true is false. Negation of false is true, false, true. So this makes sense. Check, make sure it makes sense. If Q is true, false, true, false, not Q should be false, true, false, true. So we're good. All right. Now we're going to take and focus in on these two columns. Don't let everything else distract you. Only look at these two columns. They're the only thing that matters to evaluate this OR thing here, okay? So I'm going to focus in. Think about OR. Remember, for OR, the only time it's false is if both are false, right? And we're dealing with the inclusive OR here, okay? Remember, exclusive, you think one or the other, but not both, okay? So false or false is false. False or true is true. True or false is true. True or true, in, true or with inclusive, right? True. Okay. Now, we're almost done. One more step, one more step. <clears throat> now, we want to focus in on these two columns. All right, and maybe you're already noticing something, but let's go ahead and evaluate this final, uh, these final truth values here, okay? Remember, with the if and only if, as long as the truth values are the same, it's true. Otherwise, false. So false or false is true. True or true is true. True or true is true. True or true, or sorry. False, if and only if false is true. True, if and only if true is true, etc., etc. So here we go. This if and only if statement is always true. Let's think about what that means. So I know that if P, if and only if Q, this is our symbol for logically equivalent, okay? If this is always true, what we call it is a tautology, okay? Say tautology, tautology. 
And there's an exercise in D2L you're going to think about tautologies and also contradictions. Okay? What happens if I know that I've got two compound propositions that if you put if and only if in between them, we get true. I know that P is logically equivalent to Q. Okay? And actually, if we would omit this last column here, this would be a proof, this would be a proof that the negation of P and Q is logically equivalent to the negation of P or the negation of Q. So let me write that down. So the truth table that we just did without that final column was actually a proof of De Morgan's laws, one of them. Uh, let me see, it was and, right? P and Q. We just proved one of De Morgan's laws. So P and Q is logically equivalent to not P or not Q. So the way that we prove that logical equivalence is just by drawing a truth table for this, showing that the truth values are always the same with that. So we have the same truth values in both columns, so we know that they're logically equivalent. Okay? And the other piece, which I'll have you prove in your homework, so the other piece is similar. If I negate P or Q, this is logically equivalent to the negation of P and negation of Q.